Psalm 118 verse 1 says, Give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his love endures forever. The word of God also says, Give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. So wherever you are, lift up your voice onto your God and say, Lord, I thank you for what you have done for me today. I thank you for what you've done for me throughout the week. Lift up your voice wherever you are. Don't look at me. Don't think about me, but think about your God. Think about what he's done for you. Lift up your voice and say, thank you, Jesus. Lift up your voice and say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Elohim. Thank you, El Roy, for seeing me, for protecting me, for keeping me. Lift up your voice and say something to your maker this morning. Father, we say thank you. Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for providing for us. Uh, who are we that you have been mindful of us? Uh, such a wretch as I, Father God. Uh, you have been mindful of me, mindful of my family, mindful of my community, mindful of my church. Uh, Father Lord, it is just by grace uh, that once again we find ourselves here. Uh, this morning we say thank you. This morning we say thank you. This morning we say thank you. This morning it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. We are grateful, oh God. Lift up your voice and thank Jesus. Lift up your voice and thank the Master. Lift up your voice and thank your Savior. Thank the one, Mahandolobo Sanda, who has seen you through. The name of Jesus. I don't think that this morning, I don't think that this morning some of us may get it. See, somebody else is dead and sleeping in their grave. Somebody else is on a hospital bed sick. They wish they had the mouth to open and praise God. They wish they had the feet to walk, the eyes to open, the ears to hear things. So when we come into the presence of God and your disposition is stiff and you are not able to express gratitude, it doesn't move God. But today we want a move of God to take place. Amen. And the Bible says, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. Then I can enter his courts with praise. So we want to lift up our voice and enter the gate, enter this sanctuary with true thanksgiving. You know what to thank God for. You know what he's done for you in this season. So lift up your voice and say, Lord, I truly thank you. I truly bless your name. I'm truly grateful. I'm truly grateful for the opportunities, the privileges, the favor you have granted unto me. Lift up your voice and say something to God. This morning we are grateful, oh God. This morning, Mahandala Masanta, we express our gratitude to you, Jesus. Le Kabandala Masondora Babosha for keeping us, Lord Jesus. Re Kababadala Masonta for your faithfulness, for your unfailing love, for the richness of your mercies, for your loving kindness, oh God. This morning we are grateful. This morning we are thankful. This morning, Father, we have an attitude of gratitude. We have an attitude of gratitude. We give thanks despite our circumstances. We give thanks despite what's going on in the world around us. We give thanks this morning. We give thanks this morning. We give thanks this morning. Break the atmosphere with thanksgiving. Right now, say something. Say thank you. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 
Rekababa. This morning, we are praying that God will prepare our hearts to receive whatever it is he has from us, from the praise to the worship to the word of God. The word of God says, if only you would prepare your heart and lift up your hands to him in prayer, get rid of your sins and leave all iniquity behind you, then your face will brighten with innocence. You'll be strong and free from fear. You'll forget your misery. So we want to prepare our hearts this morning by saying, Lord, however I have missed the mark, however I have fallen short, there's no shame in talking to Jesus and saying, Lord, I've missed it saying, Lord, that this week I didn't do what you wanted me to do. I didn't say what you wanted me to say, but I'm here and I'm asking for you to help me, for you to forgive me, prepare my heart to receive something from you. Make it personal and talk to God and say, Lord, prepare my heart, prepare my heart, prepare my heart. Prepare my heart, prepare my heart, Makanda Labasanta, as I praise, as I worship, prepare my heart, as I receive the word, prepare my heart, Rimahanda Labasonda Labasanta, Rekababa Labasanda Labasoka Labasante, Ribabara Bashonda Rababoshi and Labasanta, Mahanda Labasoka Baba. Tonight, Father, today, this morning, oh God, this morning, we want you to move amongst us, we want you to change us. We want you to transform us. Father, Lord, we are asking that you would cleanse us this moment, that you would wash us with the precious blood of Jesus, that, Father God, our hearts would be prepared for you and only you, God, to take full control, for you and only you, God, to move in this atmosphere. In the name of Jesus, we want to pray right now that God would be exalted in this atmosphere. That only God, that no flesh would glory as we praise, as we worship, as we hear the word of God. Whatever aspect of the service, we're praying that God would be exalted. That anything that would contend with our praise, contend with our worship as the ministers come and lead us, as the instrumentalists pr play, we are praying that God would be exalted. We are coming against anything, any attack the enemy has on this particular service. We are pulling it down in the name of Jesus. And we are praying that God would move. Lift up your voice and say, Lord, move. Spirit, move. Move amongst us. Move amongst us. Move amongst us. As we praise, as we worship, let God be exalted. Let God be exalted. Let the King be exalted. Let the king be exalted in our midst. Let his train fill the temple. Your word says, oh God, that you inhabit the praises of your people. So as we praise and worship, come and dwell here. Come and dwell here. Come and dwell here. Come and dwell here. You are are invited to dwell here. You are invited to dwell. You are invited to dwell. You are invited to reside here. In Jesus' name. So, Spirit of the Most High God, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, we thank you for what you are about to do. We thank you, Father Lord, for how you are about to move in this atmosphere, how you are about to touch and transform lives, Father God. We are praying that you would do what only you can do, Lord. We bless your name for how far you have brought us as a family, as a church, as a community, as individuals. Father, it's just by your grace we find ourselves standing here. And for that, Lord, we give you the glory. May your name be exalted. May your name be praised. And may we be able to testify at the end of this service that indeed the Lord was with us. Father, we glorify your name in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Are we not happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? God took us through a whole week and he came and he gave us life, breath, an opportunity to praise him. And so when we're in these circumstances to be in the presence of God, like our sister Michelle said, we need to not just stand there. We need to worship God with everything that we have. Can we do that this morning? Can we do that this morning? If you can be on your feet as we rise and greet everybody in the name of the Lord, we thank God for your presence here, and we're going to worship God. Amen. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wings. Some power and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wings. Some power and love. Oh, 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 oh. There's no one like our God. There's no one like our Can stay. 
He is a good God. I don't know about you, but I can declare that God is a good God. The mere fact that I have breath in my lungs means I have a good God. The mere fact that I can stand here today means I have a good God. The mere fact that I can sing this morning means I have a good God. The reason I can lift my voice this morning is because I have a good God. Do you have a good God this morning? Do you have a good God this morning? I don't want to see you idle this morning. Hey, oh. And he reigns on high. He is the Lord. Come on. Broke into the darkness, created the light. Say, he is the Lord. Oh, who is like unto him, never ending in days. He is the Lord. Oh, and he comes in power when we call on his name. He Come on. is the Lord. He Lord, and he reigns on high. He is the Lord. Oh, spoke into the darkness, created the light. Oh. He is the Lord. Oh, who is like unto him ever ending in day? He is the Lord. And you call him power when we call.
You're the King of kings. You're the Lord of lords. You are deserving of all praise. You are deserving of all worship. You're deserving of all glory, oh God. We lift you up, God. We lift you up, God. Keep saying something to him. Don't wait for the music to start. To worship your God this morning. It's not about how good the music sounds, but your heart posture before the King of Kings. Just lift something and say something to him this morning. else matters that doesn't mean your worries go away but he is greater he is awesome there's none that come compared to him and so when the angels in heaven say holy holy is the lord god almighty they have a new understanding of the glory of god not because of anything that he has done but because of who he is because of who he is that you are here this is not a guilt trip but because of who he is you are here and so we want to worship God with everything we want to cast out our crowds we want to cast out our crowds don't wait for the music to worship God don't let me tell you to say thank you God even if you just want to say I love you God that's enough oh God I appreciate you it doesn't have to be anything complicated Lord thank you God I'm confused but thank you but God I will trust you Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Oh, 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 is your name. Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus. 
Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. That's all the song says. That worthy is your name. Jesus, say with me that you deserve. That's all it is. That worthy.
that you're feeling right now. That warmth that's around you. That's the glory of God ascending. And in his presence there is liberty. There's peace. There's love. There's joy. Abundance of his grace. God, you are worthy. God, you are glorious. And all we can say, God, is worthy is your name. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Worthy is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Worthy is the one who knew you when you were a clot of blood in your mother's womb. Worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb that was slain, that died on the cross for you and me. Worthy is the God who gives us chance after chance. Worthy is the God that loves us unconditionally. Worthy is your name, God. We give you all the glory, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, are you happy? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning once again, beloved. Um, this is PIWC North York, where love abounds. Hallelujah. We always say that our God is love. And so since our God is love, then indeed we have God also abounding here. Amen. And so you are blessed this morning. I want you to be happy. This is a service that I don't want you to, to, to lose any aspect of it. Hallelujah. And so count yourself blessed. Those watching us online would also like to use this opportunity to thank you for joining us. I would also ask that you stay tuned and glued till the end, and you'll be a blessing. Amen. Amen. Now I have a few announcements that I would like to make, and then uh, we'll hand over um, the microphone to the Word of God and preacher man. Amen. Amen. So shall we please take note of the following announcement? Um, right after service, all presbyters should please wait behind. There is going to be an emergency presbytery meeting. Please make sure to attend. And so right after service, please don't be in a rush to go home, presbyters. We are talking about deacons, deaconesses, elders. Please make it a point. And after service, let's meet to have this important meeting. Amen. Also, guys of excellence, are you here? Where are the young guys? Oh, are you here? Just give me a wave if you think you are young. Oh. Okay, I'm here. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, guys of excellence, tonight at 7 p.m., you'll be having your first meeting. Hallelujah. And also, alongside that, you'll be watching um, the All-Star Game. Please make it a point um, to be part of this. It's going to be awesome. If I'm to use your words, it's going to be late. Hallelujah. You don't want to miss. Amen. And so, if you need a ride, please make sure to contact Pastor um, in that direction. Pastor would be of help to you. If you need a ride for tonight, it's going to be at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Hallelujah. Guys of excellence, please take note of that. Also, we'd also like to remind all of you of our weekly meetings, especially our Bible studies um, that will take place on Wednesday. And um, please, let's make it a point, hallelujah, to be a part. That is the only time that you can get to ask questions. Amen. The Bible says you should study um, the word of God and make sure we meditate on it. And so that's the time that you, you, you will get the opportunity so that you unravel questions that you don't even understand. Amen. And especially for the year's team, it's a very interesting one. And I would entreat all of you to be a part of this Wednesday and the subsequent ones, the Bible studies. Amen. Please make it a point to bear on Wednesday. Amen. Also, let's take note. God willing, on Saturday, there is going to be a memorial service. Um, it will be held in honor of the late Reverend um, Peter Aflu, um, the father of our sister Jennifer Graham, and also the father-in-law of Elder Graham. Um, it's going to be a virtual one. It's going to be a virtual one. This is a funeral for all of us, so please um, stay in touch. I'm sure that the Zoom link will be out later by Friday so that you can be a part of it. It's going to start from 8 p.m. and end at 10 p.m. Please, let's all come all out and support our brother and also sister. Amen. Now, God willing, next week too, there is going to be another naming ceremony. Let's come prepared. You know how we do it. Um, come with your present and the Lord will bless you. Amen. Finally, I think the children's ministry also have something interesting. Um, there is a new initiative from the children's ministry dubbed Kids Bible Fun Fridays. Kids Bible Fun 
Fridays. Now, this is a new initiative coming from the children's ministry. It's more like a Bible game, storytelling, and talk shows. It's held just for 15 minutes, just for 15 minutes. And so, we would entreat all parents to please help your kids to join on Fridays at 7 p.m. And they will learn a lot of things. Amen. You don't want to miss this. And so, please try to also subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's COP North York District Kids. COP North York District Kids. That's the channel to subscribe to on YouTube. Amen. You just received the appetizer. Yeah, it's been an awesome service. You're about to receive the main meal. Amen. Today you will live here full. Hallelujah. And so at this point, I just want you to bow down your heads as the word of God is about to come. Just bow down your heads. And then I want you to just pray this prayer. It's very, very key to me always. I've noticed that since the year began, and even last year, we've been receiving powerful messages. But I ask myself, do we keep these messages or we just live here and these messages just, just leave us too? I want you to just pray that, Lord, open up my heart. Make my heart receptive as the word of God is about to come. Just pray this prayer softly. That the word of God will stay and abide in you forever and ever. Pray to God. Oh, thou spirit divine all my nature refine till Of Jesus be seen in. just sing it softly oh thou spirit divine all my nature refined to Jesus is in. So let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All of us, in our families, come on. All his wonderful passion. And purity, oh, the spirit divine, oh, my nature refined. of our dear pastor, Pastor Philip Chemel. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I can only hear from a session of the room. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I give glory to God for this wonderful Sunday. I am amazed at what God is doing in his church in our individual lives, and I can only thank God for what he is doing. Praise the Lord. And I want, once again, I want to bless um, the music team, my dear sister Barbara, uh, and the rest of the, of the choir, the band, for lifting us up such wonderfully to the presence of God. Praise God. 
I, I am a firm believer in the fact that when the praise and the worship is lifted up, when the preacher man stands here, they just are being carried along in the flow of the spirit. Praise the Lord. You've heard me say it, now say it again. I, that is my firm belief. Because then the spirit of God has already taken control of the service. And when you come in, you do nothing but what the spirit is doing and you follow suit. So I'm always thankful that we have a team that is always lifting us up into the presence of God. That whenever they stand here, they do nothing but worship God and carry us along into his throne room. So with a clap offering onto this team that we have, our praise and worship team, our choir, our instrumentalists, let's appreciate them. Praise the Lord. Because they labor, they labor. Uh, uh, um, if you think singing is easy, uh, talk to me, I'll tell you. It's a hard job. And so for these ones to labor, to come day in and out, to minister powerfully, consistently, that tells you the amount of work they are doing. And personally, I am appreciative of all of you. So thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing yourself for God to use you. Amen. All throughout the year, as you know, as a church, we're talking about equipping the church as an army to possess the nation. And last month, which is January, we spoke concerning the theme, equipping the church or equipping the saints. And this month, we are looking at equipping the family. And by the grace of God, we've spoken a bit concerning certain aspects of the family. We spoke about a great mystery where we got to understand that when we're talking about marriage is describing the relationship between God and the church or God and the people of Israel and Jesus and the church. And the more you contemplate about marriage, your understanding deepens regarding God's love for his people. And the more you dig deeper into God's love for his people, your understanding about marriage is also enriched. Praise the Lord. And Paul says, this is a mystery. Last week, we looked at the fact that there is an early man with a heavenly mandate. And the purpose of the sermon was to bring us to the point that since God is the orchestrator and the initiator of marriage, and he has laid down the principles on which we need to marry, doing anything outside of those principles will bring that marriage crum crumbling. And it is our prayer that those of us who are in marriage, those of us who are thinking of getting into marriage, those of us who are preparing ourselves to marry, we we'll make sure we are marrying according to the principles of God. We are marrying according to the precepts of God. We are marrying according to the laid down foundation God has given his church. Hallelujah. Anything less than that will bring trouble. This morning, I want to speak on the topic, set your house in order. And as I started preparing, I realized that I will not be able to talk all about setting your house in order because I, I came up with three or four different aspects of setting your house in order. The first one is setting your finances in order. The second is setting your family in order. And realizing that I cannot speak on all of them today, I have chosen to speak on setting your finances in order. And when God gives us the grace, when we gather again, uh, we will speak on setting your family in order and setting your spiritual life in order. Hallelujah. So, turn you with me to the book of Proverbs, chapter 6. And I'll read from verse 6 to 11. Then we'll read the book of Isaiah 38, 1 and 2. Proverbs Chapter 6, verse 6 to 11. Reading from the New Living Translation. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. Though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, they labor hard all summer, gathering food for the winter. But you, lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, 
a little folding of the hands to rest, then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. Amen. Isaiah 38, verse 1. Still in the New Living Translation. About that time, Hezekiah became deathly ill. And the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to visit him. He gave the king this message. This is what the Lord says. Set your affairs in order. For you are going to die. You will not recover from this illness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're speaking on the topic, setting your finances in order. Life is full of uncertainties. One cannot predict what is going to come their way. As a matter of fact, we have tried in our generation to use technology to try to predict the events of life. So you check the weather every morning to see what the weather people are saying concerning the day's weather. And sometimes they get it right. There are times they get it horribly wrong. Because no one, as much as we try to do it, cannot predict the events of life. For instance, none of us here seated knows when the Lord Jesus will come. That is an, an event we are looking forward to, but Jesus says the day or the hour, no one knows. So, as a matter of fact, as a child of God, you live your life preparing for that event. Hoping that it will happen soon. Because our, our song is, Maranatha, Jesus comes. So, we are praying that God will come, but we don't know when. But as we go through life, we have that at the back of our mind that it can happen any time of the day. It can happen any time of the year. It can happen any time of the month. So we are prepared. We live in preparedness. We don't know when we'll have a rainy day. We don't know when we'll have a bad day. So we live our lives making provisions for that event. When things will go sour and you will not be taken by surprise. In the Bible, God will reveal to the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, about the events that are to happen in his life, in the life of the nation. And Pharaoh will quickly um, uh, put together a team headed by, you know him, Joseph, to put plans in place to help the nation live their lives even in that lean season, as God has said. So things will not come the way you plan it. There's another uncertainty in life that we cannot predict, and that is death. Nobody wants to die, but everybody wants to go to heaven. In the book of Genesis, when man sinned, God said, you will die. The day you eat of this fruit, you will die. And truly, man did die, both physically and spiritually. Because God will say to man, Thus you came from and thus you will return. So it doesn't matter what you do in life. How hard you try to polish it. How hard you try to live a good life. And I'm not saying live your life anyhow because you need to live a healthy life. Death is inevitable. So in the book of Isaiah 38, the king Hezekiah, who is in my estimation one of the best kings of Israel, did a lot of great things, a lot of reforms, Fall sick and God says to him, you are going to die. But I need you to put your affairs in order. Many times when we read this passage, we focus on how Hezekiah will pray. And God will turn things around. And I like that part too. Because it encourages me that when I pray, God listens. But I want us to focus on this aspect of God's message to Hezekiah. Put your affairs in order. It makes me understand that there were things that as much as Hezekiah had tried to bring reforms and, and do great things in the nation, there were things that needed to be done. And God was saying to him, put your house in order. Was it in his personal affairs? Was it in the nation? Was it in his home? 
Bible did not say. But God said to him, put your affairs in order. Many of us are of the view that we live life once. Yes, you live life once. But how you live your life is very important. So in our first Bible reading in the book of Proverbs 6, we are made to understand that we need to learn from the end. Work is not a curse. But work is a blessing. Work is not a curse. But a blessing. God himself instructed man to work. And Jesus said in John 5, 17 that my father is always working and so am I. So if God is working, then I need to work. Oh, praise the Lord. There is no excuse for laziness in the kingdom of God. As a matter of fact, if you are a child of God and you are lazy, you don't belong to the kingdom because the king of that kingdom is always working. Praise the Lord. So when Paul was speaking to the church in Thessalonica, he said to them that anyone who does not work should not eat. When he spoke to the church in Ephesus, he said to them, tell the person who is stealing to stop stealing, but rather work and have enough to, for themselves and also to give to others. So work in the Christian life is not negotiable. God wants us to work. But the question many a times is not work, but what we do with the blessings God gives unto us through the work. That as you work on a daily basis, God will bless you with financial resources. God will bless you with a lot of things. But how you manage that resource is what matters. And that is why today God is saying to us that we need to put our finances in order. Praise the Lord. And he says, go to the ant and learn from the ant. The reason why, one of the reasons why I love the NLT is some of the words they use. And in this case, it says, go to the ant, you lazy bones. It says, the ant has no ruler. The ant has no governor. The ant has no king. But this animal, tiny animal, is able to put the affairs in order such that in the summer month, they gather enough for the winter. In the same book of Proverbs, we are told that the ant is a small animal, but very wise. And I said to myself, if a tiny animal can have such wisdom, then how much more a man created in the image and likeness of God, in whom the spirit of wisdom lives, that person ought to do better than the ant. But here we are told to go to the ant and learn from him. The ant will keep their resources knowing that there is going to be a storm. There is going to be a day when nothing will enable them to work. And for that reason, they will have enough for themselves and for their family. Beloved, when we work, we work to provide for ourselves and also provide for the future. But many of us, we work for today, but we don't work for the future. We don't work for tomorrow. In Proverbs 10, 5, Bible says, A wise youth harvest in the summer. But one who sleeps during the harvest is a disgrace. And here I take the, the, the summer literally and also figuratively. In the summer month, in, 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 in the twilight, in the, in, the, in the prime of your life, what do you do with that time? Do you waste it on things that do not matter or you apply yourself knowing that a day is coming where you will not have the strength and the ability to do the things God has called you to do? As a young person, as a child of God, how do you use your time? How do you use time? It's a resource God has given unto us. And when time is gone, you cannot retrieve that time. So you make the most of the time. So Paul says in Ephesians that make the most of every opportunity that comes your way. For the days are evil. How do you use your time? How do you use your resources God has given you? Do you sleep during the harvest time or you are busily gathering and putting things together? And here he used a wise youth. So a person who sleeps, I can say, is a foolish youth. Praise the Lord. So such a person is a disgrace. Many of us young people, by the grace of God, we've been gainfully employed. And by the grace of God, we are making some good money. 
But unfortunately, many of us young people are spending all the money today not thinking about tomorrow. Not planning for the future. Don't get me wrong, it is good to look good. And I love to look good. But it is also important to think ahead. To look into the future. That is why we have been asked to look, go to the end. Because this tiny animal will provide for her, the future. Will provide for the tomorrow. Will provide for that winter season of their lives. But if we are going to misuse and, 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 and waste all that God brings our way. A time is coming where we'll be in need and we'll be in lack. And Bible says, poverty, scarcity will come upon us like a bandit. But I pray that that will not be our portion. Oh, hallelujah. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2, this is what Paul says. On the first day of each week, you should each put aside a portion of the money you have earned. And I'll stop there for a moment. I am a firm believer that God uses Titan to teach us how to manage our resources. To teach us how to save. That is my belief. I believe in that. Why? Because when Paul speaks of the fact that on the first day of each week, each of you should put something aside. Here he was talking about the fact that there was trouble in Jerusalem. There was famine in Jerusalem. And, and, and there, there, there was the need for the church to go and support the brothers in Jerusalem. He was going to send people to go to them to gather this money. And he said, don't wait till I come to do it. But start doing it from now. Whatever it is that you want to give. Stop putting money aside towards that. Don't wait till I come. Because the challenge is, when I come, you may not have it. When I come, you realize that the money I want to give, wow, $10,000? You may have a change of heart. So start now. So if Paul is advising the people that whatever you are planning to give unto God, to support the work in, in Jerusalem, to support the famine in Jerusalem, start now. I also want to believe that in life as children of God, we need to start saving now. That as you put money aside to support the kingdom of God, put money aside for your tomorrow. At the beginning of each week, on the first day, on the first day. So here, yeah, if we are using our, our current calendar of days, I would say on each Sunday, put money aside. Whatever God has given unto you, whatever God has blessed you with, whatever God has given you based on the work you have done, endeavor to put some aside. Not just for yourself, but also to support the kingdom. Praise the Lord. Because God wants the kingdom to go ahead. God wants the kingdom to flourish. But that same God also wants you to prosper. And that prosperity comes from managing the resources God has given unto you. Don't wait till I come. Beloved, don't wait till you are too old to save. I know, I know you can tell me there's nothing like being too old to save. You can start saving now, even if you didn't start in the past. But when we look at what Proverbs says in 10.5, that the youth, the wise youth, that means savings ought to start when you are a young person. You develop the habit of saving now because when you're too old, that habit will not come. Because you start complaining, the bills are too many. But when we decide and we, 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 we purpose and intentionally look at savings now, when we are old, when we've gotten there and things are getting difficult, we have enough stored up for our winter season. Oh, praise the Lord. And I pray that you and I will have this understanding. You will have this discipline. God says, put your affairs in order. Meaning, there's, there's been a lot of wastage in your life. There's been a, a, a lot of misuse of God's resources in your life. There's been a lot of misuse of the family resources. That there's the need for you to put things in order. Praise God. I can hear you say, but the bills are too many. I need to fulfill all my responsibilities. But beloved, when we learn to live within our means, when we learn to be content with what God has given us, we are able to manage what God has blessed us with. One of my favorite athletes, Rafael Nadal, a tennis player, will say that 
the fact that my opponent has a glass house doesn't mean I should also buy a glass house. And that is some of us, our attitude. The fact that I see my friend owning a particular property means I should also go buy that property. Meanwhile, you don't have the resource to buy that property. You don't have the resource to own what it, your friend is owning. But yet, you put yourself in debt all because you want to fit in. And Bible calls that greed. And he says, a greedy person is an idolater. They worship the things of the world. Many of us, because of greed, we are amassing things that we don't even need. All because of materialism. And our world is not helping us either because they've told you, you don't need to have the money. You can buy and pay later. It's interest free for the first year. You don't have to worry about that. You just get it. And we are being bombarded with this every day of our lives. So it's become a part of our psyche and a part of our thinking that I don't need to have the money. I can amass whatever I want and I will pay later. But you are not able to pay later. You will never be able to pay later. And there comes in the concept of the credit card. And we all fall for that trick. And now we become slaves to the lender. Praise the Lord. But God did not call you to be a slave to the lender. God called you to lend to people. He said to the people of Israel, you will not borrow. But people will come to you and lend from you. But here we are as people of the kingdom. Who has a king? Who has all the resources of the world? Yet, we become slaves. All because of greed. All because of greed. Some of us have things in our closet that we've not worn in the past three years. But yet we are buying more. Hallelujah. You see, Paul said in the first Corinthians 10.23 that I have the right to do everything. So you have the right to buy whatever you want. But the question is, are they beneficial to you? Is it, did they help you in any way? You have 10 pairs of shoes in your closet. And you want to buy the 11th one. What difference would they make? Praise the Lord. In 1 Timothy 6, 6, Paul says, True godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. True godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. And for me, the word here is contentment. Because many of us, that is the word we struggle with. We are not content with whatever we have. We are not content. And because we have this insatiable appetite for material things, we are never satisfied with what we have. Enough is never enough. But Paul says to the Philippians church, not that I was in need. I have learned how to be content. Oh, and I pray that God will teach us how to be content with what he has given unto us. I pray that God will help us to be content with the blessings he has given us. He says, I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing. And with everything. So the situation that, 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 that does not change me. The fact that they increase my pay does not mean I'll go spend more. Because I know how to manage my affairs. Even when I did not have anything, I was content. Not now that I have enough. Praise the Lord. He says, I have learned the secret. So it is a secret. And I pray that God will reveal that secret unto us. The secret of living in every situation. Can I say this? Some of us, the reason why we are not getting it is because God knows when he gives us. God knows when he gives us. Things will change. Even our love for him will change. Our commitment to God will change. Because we've not learned to live in every situation. The situation determines how you live your life. But that shouldn't be the case. 
Oh, praise the Lord. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, whether it's with plenty or little. And this is the verse you love, for I can do all things. <laughs> this is the verse you love. And we quote it all the time, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But the key is that he has learned to live in every situation. So God enables him to live in contentment. God enables him even when he doesn't have anything. So it's not that I was in need when you brought me those material things. I thank God that you brought it to me. But I did not need them because I was content even in my poverty. In my scarcity, I was content. Praise God. Not that I was in need. And I pray that in this year, as God is equipping you and I, our finances will also be in order. Praise God. Because God wants you and I to be blessed. But when he blesses us, we just throw it away on things that do not matter. When we are content with what we have, we are able to manage it well. But when we are seeking after material things, we only put ourselves into unnecessary debt. And because we've become so engrossed with material things, our mind has drifted away from the kingdom business. We don't think of the things of God. We don't think of supporting God because by the time you are done paying all those bills, you are left with nothing. You are empty. And it's a cycle after a cycle, month after month, and it's not helping. Since we are talking about the family, let me hone in on the father and the mother. Proverbs 13, 22 says, a good father, other version says, good people. But I, want, I like the part that says, a good father. So I'm adding, a good father or mother leaves inheritance for his children. And his children's children. A good father. So the measure of your goodness, of, 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 of your standard as a father, is your ability to live inheritance for generations yet unborn. Not just for your children. Reverend Otterbell once preached a sermon that he said that we got to be generational thinkers. Thinking about the children that God is going to bless us with. The, the grandchildren God is going to give us. That we think of their future, that we are living something for them. Praise God. But unfortunately, many parents are leaving their children with debt and not inheritance. And I pray that we'll have a change of mind. But the simple answer to this is to start now. If we fail to do it yesterday, God is giving us another opportunity to talk, to start putting things in place. For the future. When God calls you home. Like I said. Death is inevitable. What will be the state of your estate? What will be the state of you? Have you thought about that? As a father. As a mother. How do I want my children to live when I'm not here? Would it be chaos? Or it will be peace? Would it, would it, would it be struggling? Or, or, or they will be Okay. Yes, I know, I know, you, I hear you saying God will take care of them. Yes, God will take care of them, but God has placed you there to take care of the resource. The people, the children he's blessed you with. In John 19, 41, Jesus had died. The Bible says there was a man by name Joseph of Arimathea. He was not dead, but he had a tomb. Now, I was asking myself, what is he doing with the tomb if he's still alive? Why is this guy preparing for his death? Was he thinking of dying? Then it hit me. That was life insurance being practiced even in their time. That was life insurance being practiced even in their time. That when I'm gone... I've prepared a place. I've made provisions. In Genesis 49, 30, we hear of Joseph saying to, 
his brothers that our great our, our grandfather Abraham purchased a land with a cave in it where he was to be buried. That is where he is buried. That is where Sarah is also buried. And so when you are leaving Egypt, please carry my bones and bury me there. The grandfather made provisions for his great-grandchildren. As a father, what provisions are you putting in place? Your children's future are important. The, the, the tomorrow of your children are important. Once again, don't get me wrong. I want you to live a good life. I want to see you living the best life. But I also want to see your children prospering way after you are gone. I want to see the next generation standing on great shoulders way after we are gone. Why? Because we've laid a foundation, the right foundation, giving them the resources and the tools for them to do well in their tomorrow. As you remember, when we spoke of equipping, we said that equipping is providing resources for others to do well. What resources are you providing for your children? Financially. I was saying to a young man over the weekend that whatever number of children you want to have, that is fine. But I want to advise you. Make sure your children don't start life, do not start life with debt. And that is something that I have determined. That my children will not start life with debt. Many of us have student loans, I agree. And you know how hard it is. But that doesn't mean your children have to go through that same struggle. So start now. Dear friend, as we plan for our future, in terms of our finances, I also want you to plan for eternity. I also want to plan for where you spend eternity. Because... If I plan for my future, I have I amass all these resources, I provide for my children, and at the end of the day, I lose my soul. God says, it's stupidity. No one knows the hour or the day the Lord will come. And as a matter of fact, Jesus said, that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in our days. We will be eating, we will be drinking, we will be married, we will be given to marriage, and boom, the end will come. So we don't know. But whatever it is, I want you to prepare for that day. Be ready for his coming. When he comes today, may he find you faithful, doing what he has called you to do, that you are prepared spiritually for his coming, awaiting his coming. Do you know this Jesus? Have you given your life to this Jesus? That is also preparing for your tomorrow. Being like the ants, preparing for that winter day when Jesus will show up and call his saints into glory. Are you ready for that day? Praise the Lord. Jesus said, if the owner of the house had known what time of the night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you don't know the hour. I don't think Hezekiah had it in mind that he was going to die. But it was said to him, put your affairs in order. Beloved, I want to encourage you to find this Jesus. Beloved, I want to challenge you to look for this Jesus. I want to challenge you to give your life to this Jesus. Yes, I, 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 I want you to live okay life in this world. Oh, but there's a place. That we all desire and yearn to be. And that is with our God. And that is most, the most important decision you can make as a child. As a human being. And as a person. Jesus will definitely come again. And he is coming again. No, you and I cannot delay his coming. He is coming. So the angel said to the disciples. Just as you've seen this Jesus being carried up. So will he come. So he is coming. But will he find you faithful? Doing the work of God. Will, you find, will he find you prepared? Ready to receive him? Will he find you prepared? Living in righteousness and holiness. Being faithful to his call. Or he will find you eating and drinking. And ignoring his work. May it not be said of us. That we were 
the foolish virgins who were not prepared for the coming of the bridegroom. If we apply ourselves and save all that we can for the future, let us also apply ourselves and do all that we can to be with the Lord. Praise the Lord. This day, as I encourage you to put your finances in order, I also invite you to give your life to Jesus. I will do a great disservice to you without telling you about Christ. I will do a great disservice to you without letting you know there's an eternity coming. There's a time coming that you and I will find ourselves in eternity where we will not take anything with us. All the riches, all the gold, all the houses, they will not put, they will not add a single one of them. Just last Saturday, I was at a funeral. And like Paul said, we came with nothing. We go with absolutely nothing. This young lady laid in the casket with nothing. We were told she had two masters. She had done that. She had done that. Not a single certificate was even put in that coffin. And I pray that somebody here today will find Jesus. God wants you to put your life in order. God wants you to put your home in order. God wants you to put your affairs in order. God wants you to put your finances in order. And God also wants you to put your future, your eternity in order. Let him be the center of your life. And life will be meaningful. God will bless you. Amen. Shall we be on our feet as we pray? We've heard the word of God. The challenge is put your life in order. Put your affairs in order. Put your finances in order. Where do you fall short? Where do you find yourself struggling? You want to pray that God help me to overcome. Lord, help me to do what is right. I don't know what the future holds. Life is full of uncertainties. Today, I, may, I might lose everything. But if I have, I have you, I have everything. So I pray that, Lord, I will find you. I pray the Lord, I will manage my resources well. Why don't you lift up your voice and begin to pray? Why don't you ask God to enable you, give you the grace? Why don't you ask God to strengthen you in where you fall short? Just say something unto God. Pray unto this God. That I, I, I want to do what is right. I have mis I've been misusing my, the resources you have blessed me with. Paul says, whatever we have, we received. So whatever God has placed in your hands, it was given unto you. You are only but a steward. And as stewards, we are called to give account one day. We will definitely give an account. How are you managing these resources? You want to ask God, Lord, help me to be a good steward. Help me to be a good steward of your resources. The money you have placed in my hands. The children you've placed in my hands. The life you have given me. Help me to be a good steward of this life. Help me to be a good steward of this resource. Help me to be a good steward of my home. That the chaos in my home, Lord, I will, I, I, I will work hard to bring them under control. That with your grace, I can do all things. Lord, I will be content in every situation. I will learn the secret of living in contentment. I will not, oh God, allow material things to become an idol unto me. I will not allow greed to cause me to become an idolater. Oh Lord Jesus, help us. Spirit of God, enable us. On our own, we are incapable. 
Be like the on our Paul. own, we lack that in, ability. In, in every situation, in every situation. But I am praying, oh my God, and my Savior. Oh Lord, what Lord you given unto me, Lord? May you give us the and grace. Father, use him, give Lord. us the strength. Use them very well, Lord. Wisely, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, help me, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, you Lord, want to again Lord. pray? Help me, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I, I, I understand Jesus, and I, I know that Jesus. many of us, it's not you because we don't want to Lord. do it. But we don't even have Families of God. meaningful employment for us to be able to save. We, we, we are struggling to find work that we can even put into practice the things that we know we ought to do. We want to pray for such people in the house today. That anybody who is seeking for employment, God will open a door unto them. Yes, Lord. God will bless them with a gainful employment. Hallelujah. Why don't you lift up your voice and begin Father, to pray for somebody. Pray for that individual. You may know some of these individuals. Perhaps you don't even know them. But as a people of the kingdom and as a family, we are going to pray for each other and support each other. That God will open doors unto our brethren. Even as Lord, they put your resume. That anyone who is looking for work, anyone who is looking for employment, the Lord God will open great doors unto them. The Lord God will bless them with meaningful employment. May you cause them alone. In the name of Jesus. Father, to be on the top. God will open doors unto them. And the Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus. The see, God Lord, will bless them with, Father, with good work. In the name of Jesus. Father, that will catch your attention. That in the wherever name of they Jesus. go, even and as Lord, they prepare when themselves Lord, for Lord, interviews. People, Lord, oh, interviews. may the Spirit of God help them. The Jesus, Lord, may the Spirit of God grant them grace and favor. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Among the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In Darabo Sabra Kandala Baba, Lima Ruson did the Andarabo Cabe, Fritz Lord, Lima Sukada Bariande, needed for the jobs of God in the mighty name of Jesus. we want to pray for anyone who is yet to give their lives unto Christ we want to pray for individuals who are struggling in sin who are not able to surrender their all unto Christ we want to pray for such people that God may you touch their hearts Jesus says if the father does not call no one can come we want to pray that God will draw them unto themselves they will respond to the call of God they will surrender all to Jesus. Why don't you begin to pray? Pray for that soul. Pray for that individual. That they will make a decision for Christ. Pray for that person. That they will make a decision for Christ. Pray for that individual. That they will surrender their all unto God. Pray for that person. That they will come to Jesus. Let that be your burden. Let that be a burden on your heart. The Lord, those who are here to know you, may they make a decision, oh God, for you. As you're calling us to put our house and our affairs in order, Lord, you also want us to commit our lives unto you. Lord, may someone make a commitment today unto you. 
May they make a commitment, oh God, to serve you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And they will surrender their all. For those listening to us online and those even in-house. If you are such a person who doesn't know Jesus. Who is yet to surrender their all to Jesus. Who is yet to accept him as their Lord and personal Savior. I want to invite you today to Jesus. I want to recommend this man unto you. Beloved, he is the game changer. When he is in your life. He makes all things beautiful. When he is in your life, he makes life meaningful. When he is in your life, he enables you to overcome the things that you cannot do. That is who he is. That is who he is. And I recommend this Jesus unto you. I glorify this Jesus unto you. Wherever you are, whether online or in house, if you are such a person, I want you to lift your both hands up as we pray with you. You want to give your life to Jesus. Without Him, life has no meaning. such an individual online or in the house who is desiring, who is thirsty for Christ with your hands lifted up I want to say this prayer after me dear Lord Jesus I thank you for the cross I thank you that you came to die for me today I make a decision for you I confess you as my Lord and personal Savior. With my heart, I am believing that you are the Son of the living God. And you came to die for my sins. Come live in my heart. Make my life your own. In Jesus' name. Amen. God, we should bless you. Please take your seat. Hallelujah. If you are such a person who made a decision for Christ today, those of you online, there's a link in the chat that you can click that link and we will contact you right away to help you in this new journey. Those of you who are in-house, who made a decision for Christ, don't hesitate. Please, we invite you to meet with our leaders and they will help you. We want to be with you, we want to work with you in this new journey. Hallelujah. Before I, I hand over to Elder Alfred, I want to introduce... Uh, a family who have joined us today to worship with us unto you. We have in the house Reverend Christopher Greaves and the wife and the son worshiping with us. Hallelujah. Let's give them a warm welcome. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That is Reverend Greaves. That is the wife and that is the son. Hallelujah. Amen. They are worshiping with us. Actually, they worship with the Macion service and they came here as well. They, he is a pastor of the Anglican Church in Oshawa. And so it's a long drive for him to come. So I appreciate the drive, sir. And um, he's here to fellowship and also to see how we also do our style of worship. Praise God. Um, we are one body. We belong to Christ. One God, one Savior, one baptism. And so we see ourselves as a big family. So, sir, you are most welcome to our service. And we appreciate you that you took time off your busy schedule. I know how it is uh, uh, to, to, to come and fellowship with us. God, we should bless you. But before the choir, please, can you take your seat? I want to give Reverend Greaves a minute to say a word. And after that, I hand over to Elder Alfred. So, sir, um, we invite you to the podium um, to share a word with us. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Philip. Uh, good morning. 
It's wonderful to be here. My name is Pastor Kit from Christ Memorial Church in Oshawa. Uh, the, one of the other pastors of our church, his name is Dr. David Reed. Uh, he is a professor at Wycliffe College at University of Toronto and also uh, advises at Tyndale University, and I'm taking a course at Tyndale. And I understand one of the other pastors has had connections with Tyndale uh, University as well. So. Uh, one of the courses there I'm studying uh, gives me the opportunity to think about the, the global church and uh, to give us opportunity to worship in a tradition not my own. So this is, this thing's hanging off my ear, uh, uh, this is my opportunity to invite you to come and worship with us sometime in an Anglican church. Uh, it, I don't know if you want to drive all the way to Oshawa, you certainly would be welcome, but there are lots of Anglican churches around. Uh, we worship the same God, and it is so wonderful for my wife, Diane, and my son, Justin, and I to be here to worship with you, and also uh, with the folks over in the other part of the building. Have you ever been worshipped over there, too? Yeah, okay. Um, so, um, uh, the, the scripture that was coming to mind for me this morning as I'm doing my morning prayers uh, was uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I think the pastor may have made reference to it uh, about our, um, or maybe it was in the other worship service, because it was in a different language over there in Twi. So uh, it was, I was getting a translation, so, um, so I don't remember which. But um, our, our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. Wow. God gave you your body, and he gave me my body. And what we do with our bodies, as you know, I, you're talking about resources, equipping for, uh, for ministry, is serving as people of God. Uh, we're given this bodies, and it, it's an amazing thing that this body of ours. And um, in the Anglican Church, we're doing something called Black History Month. And uh, we, we need to learn more about how to appreciate and love one another because we've had some real issues and real problems in our world. And uh, so this body is a gift of God. And not only is my body, but I, I, the Holy Spirit dwells inside of me by faith. Isn't that amazing? The Holy Spirit lives inside of you when you've said yes to Jesus. So I, anyway, I was reflecting on that this morning and uh, in, in my little prayer room uh, and uh, thinking about the stewardship of this body and the opportunity to be uh, together as not just physically, like um, me individually, but us together as, as a group of people. You've never met me before. I've never met you. I don't know... <laughs> It's just so different, you know, for us. Um, my, my wife and I and our children traveled to Jamaica. We were in the National Track and Field Stadium in Jamaica. Uh, it was five years ago this week. And we were invited from a, a migrant farm worker who comes to Canada every year. Am I talking too long? <laughs> okay. Anyway, we're so grateful for these migrant workers who come to, to pick our fruit and do things like that. And he invited us to Jamaica to come and hang out with his family. And that was so cool. So we were going around visiting all, um, I think there's 13 parishes or, or municipalities in Jamaica. We visited 12 of the 13 in traveling around visiting the migrant workers and visit, meeting and having, um, uh, what is it, ackee and saltfish? Yeah. <laughs> Um, different foods that they would they, they were serving us, and um, we slept in their homes, and we um, we were in a resort for a few days, but we traveled around for a few days as well. So we got to meet all kinds of the, these workers. So we're in Kingston, in this. Uh, it's a long way from Ghana, I know, but I, it's, I haven't had the chance to go to Ghana. All right, so. Um, uh, so we're in the stadium and there's, I don't know, 5,000 people there and there's young people, the high school kids and, and, and university college kids and they're racing you know, up and down the track. And uh, you know, there's a, a future Desai or a future um, Hussein Bolt or something in the group. Uh, and there's a drone and there's a, got a camera on it, on the drone, and it's taking camera shots of the people in the crowd. And uh, it, it kind of focused on us. And uh, we, were all, we sort of waved at the screen. It was not a kiss cam. I didn't have to kiss my wife. But um, it would have been fun but, um, to do that. But uh, So it was a reverse situation 
for me to be the only white folks among a stadium full of black folks. And um, I have no idea what you live with in, in a, a predominantly white uh, society, but we had a little taste of it in the week we were there in Jamaica and in that stadium. So my heart goes out to you whatever issues you face. It really does. Uh, because of the bodies God gave us, but the, the blindness that we have, or the, the racial prejudice, all those kinds of things that go on in our society. And it isn't, let's face it, it isn't just white on black, because it can be all different kinds of racist sort of attitudes, right? Whether it's Asian or whatever. So, um, so if, if, we, if we remember that, uh, I, and I find I'm tag taming with Pastor Philip's message here, but where is he? I don't know where he, maybe there is. Um, but um, the, 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 being equipped as part of the body of Christ, we were given this body. Uh, if the Holy Spirit's really going to be at work in us to help us to, with, not just with our finances, with our future and so on that you're talking about, I hope I was paying attention. Uh, it, it, it is to be... Uh, to apply this to our life together as the body of Christ. Together, the body of Christ. So uh, t this is a great learning opportunity for me and for my family. I, I didn't know I was going to talk so much, but i um, <laughs> grateful. Uh, so please count yourself invited to an Anglican church and worship some other place sometime. Expand your horizons. Maybe you already have done that. Uh, but for us, when we were in Jamaica, we were worshiping um, in a Assemblies of God, I think it was. And uh, there was a mission night, and there was a speaker, and he wore all pink. It was amazing. And he, the, the, the scripture verse that he used had, had been the scripture verse that I had was on my heart for that night. And, uh, and it was just, God is great. God is good. He's amazing. And so he can break down barriers. He can help people understand one another. And uh, uh, this, uh, I probably this, I should probably sit down soon. But I, I'm just uh, want to stir within you the work of the Holy Spirit to be what the pastor was suggesting that we to be, uh, to think about our, our 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 future and our present as part of this great treasure of God. You are a treasure to me. Thank you for letting me having a few minutes to speak. Thank you for the chance to worship with you. God bless you, Pastor, and your family for worshiping with us. We'd we'll also do our best to visit you. Amen. Beloved, you've heard the word of God. What shall we say to our pastor? Oh, I didn't hear you. What shall we say to our pastor? Yeah, you know, I told you, I told you you'll be receiving the main meal and you've had it. How do you feel? Aha. Uh -huh. And it's left with a dessert, so don't rush, okay? That's the benediction. Amen. But before that, the word of God has come to us and has told us to be financially prudent. It's time for us to give our tithes and offering. Um, you know how we do it in our church. You're one tenth of your earnings. You give it to God. Um, tithe is one of the best ways to invest. I'm a believer of that. Hallelujah. And I have a lot of testimony today. So, shall we please be on our feet as we invite the praise team um, to take us through that time. Those of us watching online, um, you can give by e-transferring to PIWC North York 2020 at gmail.com. If you are here also and you have it by cash, you can dance gently and then come and put it in the bowl. Um, if you also want to do the interact machine, it's at the back, you can do that as well. Amen. So shall we all be on our feet and the praise team, please lead us through a powerful praises. Amen. Amen. Great is our Lord God and greatly to be praised his words is over us all his works shall praise great is our lord god and greatly to be praised his words is over all his words great is our lord god All his words shall 
so good. God, you are kind. God, you are wonderful, my Lord. You, God, you are so good. God, you are so good. for giving us the opportunity to give unto you. We pray that, Father God, this continues to push your kingdom forward. We pray and we ask that, God, you continue to bless the people that gave and those who were not able to give that, God, may you continue to make provisions for them so they can give unto your glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God, we should bless you um, for being here. We are so grateful unto God for the opportunity to fellowship again. Um, we're bringing our service to a close, but I want to reiterate a couple of the announcements that came earlier in the service. Um, God willing, right um, tonight, the guys of excellence, we are meeting for our first meeting of the year, and we encourage all the young men to be here. It's going to be fun. It's going to be lots of food. It's going to be a lot of activities. And like we heard, we're going to watch the All Stars games as well. We're going to have the all, we're going to watch the All Star games as well. So please do well to come. Um, once again, if you need a ride, do well to let us know, like right about now. Yeah, so that we can make the necessary arrangements to bring all of you together. It's right here. We'll have fun. And um, next week, on um, the 26th in the evening, 8 o'clock p.m., as we heard, Elder Emmanuel Graham and wife will be celebrating the life of um, Reverend Aflu. Uh, and it's going to be a virtual event. Um, the details, I believe, has been shared on the church WhatsApp platform, right? But if not, we'll share it on the church WhatsApp platform. Please take note. And do well to participate. We want to encourage all of you to come. Let's support our brother, uh, our elder, and our sister as they um, celebrate the life of uh, Reverend Aflu. Amen. I'm told there are a couple of uh, Thanksgiving and want to give opportunity for that to come. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. So our sister Lydia is thanking God for seeing her through her master's and nurse practitioner program for passing her board exams and granting her a job. Amen. So please, if you see her, you congratulate her and you wish her all the best. Amen. Also, at this point, let me just call Mama Grace Jackson. Just come and say something to God. Amen. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's sing it for her. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Thank you. Oh, I love you. I thank the presbytery for showering blessings unto me throughout the weekend. And I just thank God. I'm 27 years now. And I praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. And any birthday celebrant here too. And please, you all just have to hear, help me cut a special cake that I baked for her. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. God has been so good. At this point, shall we please rise up as we call on our elder, Daniel, to give us the closing prayer. And after that, pastor will bless us. Amen. Why don't you bow down your heads while we pray. Father, we are grateful to you for your love. We're grateful to you for what you've done for us as a church, as individuals. You've been good. You've been kind. You've been wonderful. Your mercies and your grace we've seen in our lives. And we want to say thank you. 
Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for speaking to us to get our, our, our homes in order, to get our families in order, to get our finances in order. God, we pray that this word would sink into our hearts, that we wouldn't just listen to them and deceive ourselves, but God, we pray that we would apply them. We pray that we will walk out with this inspiration from you and put things in order that we'll get our families in order, we'll get our finances in order, that God would work, would do hard work to leave inheritance for our children and our grandchildren. As we pray and get things in order, we also want to bring our eternity before you. We don't want to just walk around gaining the world and in the end losing our souls. And so God, we pray that you help us recommit ourselves to you we will see the importance of developing a relationship with you. That God, in the end, when you show up in your glory, you would say, well done, good and faithful servant. As we've stepped into a new week, God, we want to pray that you be with us. In our going out and our coming in, you'd be with us. You'll guide us. You'll lead us. That we'll come back next week and continue to give you all glory, all honor, all praise. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Somebody say amen. Amen. Shall we receive the benediction? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his countenance over you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.